it's a sports cruiser, it's a sports yacht. It wants to give you a sporty experience. I'm feeling that right now. Like you are gonna be happy with those motors. Good morning, g'day guys. Uh, in this video, I'm gonna take this Princess V40 for a spin, get up to full speed, see how she performs. Um, and I'm just gonna talk to you about um, how you could decide on what engines suit you. Um, this one's got the twin Volvo 340 horsepower, but you can option it up to the 380. So I'll just have a little bit of a discovery, um, see what we find along the way. Um, and I'll make some observations and share them with you as I discover them. This is my very first drive of the boat. I've been sitting downstairs before flying the drone, but I'm literally gonna discover what I do along the way and share it with you. Um, one interesting little fact on this boat is we've got a Williams jet tender on the back. So that's gonna uh, move the center of gravity a little bit aft and we'll see if that makes a difference. Uh, my name's Dan Jones, welcome to Dan's Boat Life and the test drive video starts right now. <laughs> So yeah, we're, um, we're here in New Zealand, Kia Ora, that's a terrible Australian attempt at saying g'day in Kiwi. Um, yeah, Auckland, beautiful spot, wonderful bay here. I've got the city in the background and a couple of islands and a volcano behind me, so that's pretty awesome. Uh, but anyway, we're not here to talk about volcanoes, we're here to talk about princesses. So um, this boat, she's about 10 tonnes light, I believe. Um, we have got the Williams Jet Tender on the back we got uh, ooh, almost three quarters of fuel on board um, and it's about a 730 litre tank and, um, and the 340 horsepower Volvo Pentas on this particular boat. Um, cruising along at about six knots at the moment at 900 revs and the boat is controllable, not making any wash to speak of. So this is gonna be perfectly acceptable um, in any social environment or surrounded by moored or anchored boats. Um, bringing the revs up a little bit, we'll just take them up to a thousand. And what I'm gonna do, I'll do a few turns, get the boat up to full speed, and then I'll also um, talk to you about this helm and this driving position a little bit later in the video. Um, and if you are interested in this princess, there will be a walkthrough video. So that's gonna be separate. I'll pop a link in this description and also that'll come up in the screen uh, pretty much when I have edited it. So feel free to follow that and check it out. But at a thousand reps, we're getting seven and a half knots and still really no, no waves to speak of that's gonna offend anyone. The, deals, the diesels feel nice and talky. Um, and just bringing that speed up through eight knots. So that's got me at 1400 reps and eight knots and climbing, about 8.2 there. I can feel the, the, the bum starting to settle a little bit starting to make some wash but that's not offensive whatsoever so you could still justify that and I've got my drives in the fully down position and my trim tabs fully up at the moment so it'll be interesting on the takeoff I'm going to deliberately do the takeoff with the trim tabs in the up position to see what that weight aft feels like uh, in terms of the Williams jet tender um, now we'll take it through nine knots just there so that's getting me to 1400 revs on the motors my first wave starting to break second one not so yet so you're just acceptable in a no wash zone and that's settled in at 9.2 knots 1400 revs and we'll just nudge that up over 1500 now that's getting me to 9.9 10 knots starting to get unacceptable in terms of the wash and I can feel the ass really starting to settle in there and uh, you know once you hit 1650 to 1700 revs, the speed's settling there at only 10.4 um, knots. We're making considerable wash. That's about my signal. Uh, that's when the boat's saying to me, get up and get moving, Dan. So let's do it. I'm just gonna, just gonna open it up. Oh, it feels really smooth. Okay, I can see noticeable bow raise and I'm gonna put that down to, I don't have the trim tabs and I've got a tender on the back, but already, it's settled. So I've just got up to 2,800 revs there. I'm gonna do a little bit of trim on the drives and I'm at 22 knots. Feels good, feels good. Um, what I'm gonna do is now I'm gonna play with the tabs. 
there you go. So it does make a difference, just giving your uh, Bennett trim tabs a little bit, a little bit of a nudge down to um, to balance out the boat a little bit better. So that's got me at a speed of 22.7 knots, 2,800 revs. The boat just feels good. I'm not going to do anything crazy just yet. I'm just going to feel the boat for now. I feel like. You know, in a city like this where your distances to your lunch spots are a little bit greater than what we would have in Sydney, um, you know, sitting on this sort of 22, 23 knot speed, um, your fuel consumption is going to be acceptable and your travel times are going to be good too. So let's, um, let's put the boat through a turn and just see how she feels just at that 23 knot speed there. I'm just doing a moderate turn there. Yeah, it feels good. Um, expectable amount of heel, nothing, nothing out of the ordinary there. Feels controllable. And my visibility feels good. I'm gonna stand up in it at some point, but I feel really comfortable from the seated position. And I've just brought the speed up to 24 knots there. And now I'm gonna actually just nudge it up a little bit. Give me 3,000. Oh yeah, you can feel the engines coming into play there. So now it feels like it wants a little bit of a trim up on the drives. And I can feel with that extra speed, the bows just settle down there. That feels good. Okay, so that's a 25 knots, 2,900 revs. If I go quiet, it just means I'm navigating. This isn't my home port. I don't feel like running into anything today. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we're just sitting quite comfortably there at 25 knots. I'll just give it a little bit more speed, 3,100 revs. Yeah, you could absolutely do that. I feel like you do a bit more. Yeah, 26 to 27 knots. Oh, here we go. This is the boat's sweet spot, I believe. This feels great. Yeah, so if you're in conservative mode, you might sit on that 22 knots um, to eat up some miles. But if you want to get to your lunch destination and have a bit of fun along the way, I feel like 3,000, 3,100 revs is going to be you. Let's just tighten that turn up a little bit. This is comfortable. This is comfortable. Just. I don't even really feel the need to stand up at the moment. With the roof open, I've got a wonderful vista in front of me. Um, this is this boat's doing what I guess they would advertise. It's it's a sports cruiser. It's a sports yacht. It wants to give you a sporty experience. I'm feeling that right now. Um, the boat's sexy. You feel the looks when you get on board because it's an impressive boat. But then it's it's returning. It's returning that in its performance. Some boats look fast, but they don't feel fast when you're on board. This this one definitely does. I don't know if that's the best way to describe it, but that's how I'm going to do it. So I've, I've transitioned to the standing position now. And so at 5'7", I can see over. I do have a little bit of a blind spot here, but forward and all of this is quite visible. But for a guy of my stature, I, I'm going to miss anything coming from starboard. So that could be an issue in a busy port, so you might sit down. Um, or you can just lean yourself like this and capture the views like so. So that's, that's still doable. The flip-up bolster is reasonably easy to operate going to go back to the seated position so I might do a faster turn this time going through some waves yeah the hole just eats it up nice alrighty just going to do a nice tight turn here guys oh beautiful at speed yeah, you can really hook it in there. That's great. So now let's give it a wide open throttle, full speed this time. Okay, full speed, raising my trim tabs. Give the drives a little bit of a trim. I'm getting to 3,500 revs and I'm getting a speed of 31 knots and climbing. 
and that's uh, I'm just seeing 32.1 there 32.1 32.3 was the top speed I saw there so that's great um, for what is a family weekender a sexy day boat and a boat that you could justifiably own instead of a beach house so that's pretty cool now I want to put this thing through a couple of turns so <laughs> this is what it's all about sports cruiser you got to do some sporty stuff lovely middle of winter here by the way in Auckland it's I thought it was going to be worse than it is it is nippy but it's it's not that bad I can see why boating is so popular in New Zealand like I was saying to Mitch before in the car, you can't sneeze without being a couple of miles from the coast. Everywhere you go is ocean. You know, every direction. I think we cross we cross the uh, must have been the west coast of New Zealand on the aeroplane. I didn't even have time to straighten my seat back and put the tray up, and we're on the other coast. <laughs> it's like it's like oh, there's more water. It's awesome. Yeah, this is cool. This is cool. Imagine doing this on a hot summer's day. You can converse with all your mates here, standing up. I can see everyone. I feel like if I'm putting it through sporty maneuvers like this, I probably would stand. And the only, the only, the only safety factor is this pillar here, which for taller blokes it's not going to matter, and it's not a safety factor because you just sit down. And I think you must must have it because that's how they have the sexy looks of this boat which is just so important and integral to a boat like this all right let's hook it around so this is the smaller engine option i'm getting exciting speeds i'm getting 31 32 knots of top speed i've got really happy cruise speeds of um, 27 knots and a slow cruise of 22 knots and I've got a considerable considerable amount of weight aft so I don't have perfect balance um, I only did maximum a quarter trim on the trim tabs just then so what does that tell me the base model motors are just fine like you are going to be happy with those motors if you've got an inkling to always have the biggest and best of everything sure go for the big motors um, what's that going to do for you if you load the boat up with 10 friends and you know if all your friends are married and they're sitting in the back and they weigh twice the average weight of an Aussie um, or your rugby boys sure the boats really going to need some power but if you're not loading it up with huge volumes of people and if you're doing your normal style of boating, I don't think it's completely necessary. Um, it's, you could perhaps save that money and put it into a sexy Williams jet tender like we have on this or some other options that you might get some use out of because this is definitely um, a hull and engine configuration, which is impressive. You know, some boats that I drive, the base engine model um, leaves a little bit you know, it's a little bit unimpressive some of the boats and you just must must always upgrade to the biggest engine possible uh, that's not the case on this v40 like that that was fine that was fun that was sporty that was entertaining um, and you're getting your money's worth so yeah if, if you've got to have the fastest um, biggest motors possible go ahead and do it but if you see value in having a, a sexy tender or some other options uh, I think the base model motors are just fine anyway that was a test drive if you're interested in a walkthrough follow the link that's coming up on your screen now or if you want to see some similar content that's going to be popping up on the screen as well my name's dan jones it's been dan's boat life see you on the next one <laughs>